Hey guys, it's Mel. Today I thought I'd talk about the INTJ in addiction. So the INTJ personality type is prone to compulsive behavior. For me personally, I think this stems from our need for control, which is rooted in the fact that we are constantly trying to find the best way to do everything. We're trying to improve upon every system and fix every potential problem. And in order to implement change, we have to have some kind of authority. We have to have some kind of control. So we feel the need to have control of the system so that we can fix it. And that pours over into everything of, you know, feeling like you have control in your life and things will offset that control in the INTJ most of the time it's going to involve emotions and or sensory input because those are the inferior functions for the INTJ the introverted feeling and the extroverted sensing now the extroverted sensing becomes an even bigger problem because of the SE grip of the fact that once the INTJ loses control, the SE is most likely going to be the one that tries to take control of the situation. So the addiction for an INTJ, most of the time you're not going to see INTJs that are just addicts unless they're functioning addicts and then you're probably not even going to notice or see that they are having any kind of problems. We tend to have the ability to vet ourselves to step outside of ourselves and to implement changes in ourselves because we're constantly trying to improve ourselves just like we are trying to improve everything else and we can make those adjustments on our own and we don't seek external help through that process um but long term we're not we're going to avoid that addiction or we're going to get into it and get back out of it because of our necessity for having our brain be free from all of this peril. So an INTJ may drink heavily or take drugs or something temporarily so that they can get their mind off of whatever they're caught up overthinking and everything and they find it as an escape, but they wouldn't want to be there long term because you don't have control over your brain anymore and we want to have that control we want to be in that place we want to be thinking about everything and we want to feel um, like we're in control of our body and being hyped up on drugs being um, completely drunk takes that away like we no longer have control over our bodies so the addiction is again going to be more of a cycle of overindulgence and then pulling away and overindulging and you know removing it completely and this is typically something physical it's something sensory and because the INTJ's SE the extroverted sensing function is being neglected or underdeveloped in a person with a very developed SE function, that is where you're going to see them enjoying the present. That is what allows people to live in the moment, to be there and indulge in what is there in that active moment. The INTJ doesn't do that well. At least me personally, I haven't ever. I'm still trying to figure that out. I spent most of my life with people coming to me being like, Mel, you need to enjoy the moment. Just be here in the present. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. Just be right here. In, in as many ways and phrases that you can put that information, like I've heard it a million times. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because... I feel like I live with one foot in the past and one foot in the future and this is the most logical path for me to take because I'm trying to fix everything and in order to do that I need to analyze the information from the past and all the mistakes and everything that existed before and utilize that to make better decisions but I have to be focused on the future because I need to adapt and to identify potential vulnerabilities and changes before they happen. So I need to be focused on the future, but I need to 
have all of the data from the past and be constantly looking back at it and the present day moment kind of falls through the cracks of like okay that's nice this is what's going on everybody's here having a good time and like that is does not compute and my little computer brain is like okay well whatever I'm going over here to think about stuff from the past and like what I can fix in the future and like right now is not is, is going on right now and so I don't I don't know what to do with it I don't know what to do with it um, because we pull away from that and we're not enjoying like physical pleasure in the moment that function gets pushed to the brink where it just screams out at some point of needing attention and then instead of finding a path to prevent that from happening the INTJ just like throws whatever it is at the SE function to like shut it up so whether that's overindulging in food or alcohol or drugs or sexual activity or physical activity of some kind like rigorous exercise um, the INTJ goes completely overboard instead of engaging in the sensory to enjoy the moment. An example of this would be say an INTJ has spent so much time working on everything and all of these things and one day they come to the realization because again we're trying to improve everything including ourselves. INTJs are after personal growth all the time. So an INTJ may look at themselves and be like wow I've accomplished all these things I've done all this stuff and I'm looking at looking for potential problems and then they look at themselves in the mirror and go oh my gosh like, I need to lose weight. I'm not really healthy. I should look into this. And the INTJ, instead of setting out a realistic path of long-term solution, is probably going to overestimate themselves and their physical capability and create some kind of plan, which they logically put together but is absolutely like impossible for them to accomplish physically. So with the fitness example you might see this INTJ say oh gosh I need to do something about lifestyle changes I need to be healthier. So they decide all like they're gonna quit eating fast food and sugar cold turkey. Um, I'm going to only eat these three meals I'm following this rigorous plan. I'm going to go to the gym twice a day for two and a half hours each time for six days a week. And in this amount of time, I'll be exactly where I want to be. And, you know, I did the math and all of this is planned out and this should work. <laughs> and my system is ideal. Um, but very likely that the INTJ, especially if it's been years before they've done any kind of physical activity because they've been avoiding it, like they're not going to be able to maintain that, even if they can do it for a week. Um, they're going to hit a point where their body catches up to them and says, oh no, yeah, no, you can't do that. Like you have to build up to this. And that is just reminiscent of the high standards that an INTJ puts on everything is they will bring that down on themselves harder than anyone else in their life. And then it hurts even more to like not be successful at it. Like I knew I should do this, like this should work. Um, but there's a lot of non-logical factors <laughs> that factor into things that everything can't be calculated by numbers. I remember one time when I uh, first cooked a turkey and I can't remember what the situation called for me being the one to cook because I wasn't the one who cooked most of the time. But anyway, needless to say, I decided I was going to make the turkey for Thanksgiving dinner. But I was trying to make the entire Thanksgiving dinner and I already didn't cook much and I overestimated how much I would actually be able to accomplish in the time and I didn't get the turkey in as quickly as I needed to for it to be done for the meal. But then I just looked at the list of the time frame and the weight of the turkey and I figured I would do a little math and I would just up the temperature to mimic the time and the size of the turkey and everything would be okay. 
And then when my mom came home and everything was a mess and I explained to her what I did, she was like, it doesn't work that way. And I'm like, but I did the math. I checked it three times. It's going to work. <laughs> but Mel, it doesn't work that way. And there's some things in life that just don't work that way, but the INTJ isn't thinking about that. We're thinking about let's fix it and it's okay. Like no matter how high the standard is or how hard this is, like I can do it. And so the INTJ really needs to hunker down and hone in on learning how to enjoy the present moment, learn how to um, stretch your SE function, and learn to take in more sensory information as it happens. And so you don't go overboard when you have gone a long time without using any of it. Enjoy the pleasures of life while you're there so that you don't get to a place where you have no pleasure at all and then you overindulge in it. <laughs> and that's the typical INTJ fashion with addiction, at least from my point of view and the way that I've experienced it in my life. So let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts and opinions and you know what you agree with, don't agree with. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody's input and look forward to talking to you next time.